Hey there, everyone. I am thrilled to be inviting you, welcoming you to Art 29 Raku Ceramics. It is a gathering we're going to have together here coming in the fall on Fridays. And the course is taught, um, we're going to delve deeply into ceramics, and you're going to do it with some other students that are also exploring ceramic sculpture. So those are the two topics that will be uh, running simultaneously through the semester. So everybody's going to kind of get exposure to a double um, topic there, get twice the information that you might typically get. But for us in Raku Ceramics, we're going to be doing the Raku firing process. And whether you make pottery or you make sculpture or you do both, none of that is really of concern to me. Uh, I'm interested in you making the best work that you need to make. And I will be available for offering many different suggestions and demonstrating and guiding you through the many possibilities there are for um, Raku ceramics. And the Raku process is a firing process that we do in a specially designed kiln. It allows us to heat your pieces up now once they've been glazed to about 1900 degrees, uh, about cone 06 is the technical uh, temperature rating. And then once they've gotten to that temperature, we uh, can lift the top of the kiln up. So we're, all the pieces are exposed, they're bright orange, really bright, bright orange. And we take them with tongs and put them into burning materials. And those burning materials do a couple of things. One is when we cover them up, we put them in the burning materials and then cover them. When we cover them up, they um, be, the, the unburned carbon and reduction environment uh, manipulate the glazes, change the glaze colors, and will any bare clay absorbs the free floating unburned carbon and becomes a very sooty dark black gray. So that's a really brief description. We'll have the whole semester to go deeply into the glazes and the firing process. And by the end of the semester, each and every one of you will be able to lead a firing, to start a firing and, and guide it and pay attention to it and learn how to do all the things that are required to do a firing. So that's gonna happen. Um, we're very excited about uh, doing all of that. Um, so the, um, the class itself, um, has some different kinds of assignments uh, that you'll be able to explore. Um, there are a few initial assignments that are related to exploring the different glaze potentials and uh, learning to decorate a little bit more and, and to, to try some things experimentally. And then um, you can launch into the full um, creating things that you're interested in. And if you if you don't have a specific interest, I will be able to provide you with some uh, assignments and guiding um, ideas that will help you um, along your way. So um, there are, that's going on. The class, like all the classes, really has three focuses. I want you to learn as much as you can about Raku, about the process, about the history, about the culture, where it came from, which was uh, Japan originally, and then America played a great role in developing Raku as well. And then after we've done all of that, as we do all of that, we'll be doing it simultaneously. What I'm very interested in is you as an artist. What is your interest? What are you trying to discover? And maybe you don't know. Maybe you are actually discovering it in the class, which is wonderful. So um, that will be a major focus, too. So we have those three folds. One is learning the technique and the history, and then um, also learning uh, more about you as a creator. What's your process? So that's what's going to go on with that. This page here that you're looking at, this home page kind of functions as a syllabus and tells you all these things about who I am, what your assignments are, how the course is run. And then if you go to modules, then you'll start to, you can see through the class. Now, there's only a few things that you're required to actually do on this on this page, on, on in this canvas shell, what we can call this course thing that you have. And those are, um, there's lots of resources. So there's lots of things about basic ceramic techniques that you can look at and review. There's lots of things about introduction to the class. There's an excellent section on dates and things that are coming up to be aware of. And then there's um, also 
um, some things that I want you to do. And, and once you go into the modules, one is to introduce yourself. There's a section where you actually can input uh, answers to questions that I've provided for you to introduce yourself. And then I want you to uh, look at the answers of other students and get to know your fellow students. So we'll be doing that in class as well, but it would be nice to have something on the computer. Another thing that goes on throughout the semester is that there's a section for you finding your favorite inspirational quotes about art, creativity, ceramics, um, uh, truth and beauty and anything that you're interested in, anything that you think is important that we need to know. And you can put up quotes by people. You can put up quotes by yourself um, rather than a famous person. You are a famous person. It just depends how many people know. So you can put those quotes up that way and you can add um, YouTubes. You can put in uh, links. And if you don't know how I can show you, you can put links to YouTube videos that you find inspirational or important about creativity. Um, you'll see that I've already put some in for you in the, in the Canvas shell as you explore it. Um, so those are some things that you can do there. And I want everybody to put four or five of those in, perhaps maybe even one a week. And then what I do, I start the class every week with a quotation. Um, and, um, and I'll start with a few of my own and then I will um, be uh, going to that section in the in the canvas to find what you have uh, put there and we'll start the class with what you offer. So when you put quotes in there, when you put inspirational items in there, they can become part of the curriculum. You're actually taking over the class for those uh, first 15 minutes or so, so we can um, all benefit from what you have to, which you think is important. You get to really take responsibility for um, your own education, for what you care about. And you can convey that to your community, which we all are. That's so important in all my classes that you come together as a group and you make a community for the semester, which is unlike any I've ever worked with. Every class I teach is different. So um, I'm looking forward to working with you. It's a real honor and a privilege and a joy to have this uh, opportunity. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to share my screen, uh, which is, I guess, Zoom talk, for I'm gonna put up a, um, uh, a PowerPoint and just go through it with you, because I wanna make a few points. I wanna talk to you about a few important things that for me, I'd like you coming into the first day of class or uh, within, you know, after the first week to be thinking about. And so um, we have, so this is, says, welcome to Raku, beauty in form and color, which Raku certainly is. It's you're creating forms and then uh, you're cre putting on glazes and color and then we are, um, uh, we are glazing them. Uh, you put it on the color and then we're firing them and we come out with something perhaps ephemeral, the greatest quality, some mysterious object or object of wonder. That's our plan. So this is a picture of an earlier version of me um, reducing, uh, doing the Raku reduction that you heard me talking about briefly. And we're gonna learn lots more about that. Um, here are what the original Raku tea bowls looked like. These are some from the 1500s. Um, this is a um, example of what Raku can be and what it looks like. And it's the birthplace in Raku. And we'll talk about that in class. In the mid 1500s, Raku for ceramics was really uh, given a, a tremendous boost. And then it went from Japan in the 1950s to, um, to America. And this is an example of what we started doing via the work of people like Jiggs, Pearson or um, uh, Paul Soldner, uh, pioneers that pioneered an American style of Raku. And what you're looking at here is a very copper rich glaze that has been uh, reduced. Uh, the Japanese never did the post-firing reduction that I've shown you a picture of and described. Here's another look at a copper, well, this is often referred to as copper flash. And it's tricky to uh, get these kinds of results. Um, here's an example of something I want to start thinking about with you. I want us to start working about. This is Wayne Higby, and he became really exceptional at creating these painted surfaces where uh, they really look like landscapes. 
And here you can see this uh, beautiful landscape in this bowl, and the bowl almost disappears. This only works from two viewpoints, but it's really quite exceptional. And that's where I want to go, is I want to show you images now of both uh, of a lot of ceramics, some that is Raku and some that could be made with Raku, and just start thinking about what about how we want to uh, finish our pieces uh, in a compositionally profound way. So here you can see um, these are three open uh, vessels, uh, these rectangular forms, and you can see that the, the artist is really um, quite um, interested in very abstract uh, paintings across the surfaces. You can see it's uh, sort of divided. There's about a third or a quarter at the bottom that uh, has its own color shading. And then the the top section, most of it is this um, kind of between, not never quite white a little, it's kind of pale blushes of, of uh, pink and blues and and then some then some color saturated highlights like the red in the center or the dark blue circles on the left or um, uh, the black X's on the right. So some really interesting compositional um, uh, gambits that you can see here. And we'll look at some of those that artists work in a little bit. Um, here again is another um, piece. This is uh, for sure Rakud, and it's a, it's not a white crackle glaze. It's a white-ish glaze, maybe something like something we have that's called spotted ongobe. Um, and we'll experiment. I think we want to find some whites that won't necessarily succumb to the heavy reduction. And then you can see the bare places that have been left uh, unglazed have turned black. Here uh, you can see, again, a very subtle, mostly white, mildly reduced uh, piece. And uh, so this is something we can experiment with too. And here you have this block with this delicately perched bowl on its edge. It's really quite a lovely. And then that when you get a line across that horizontal like that, it looks very much like almost a horizon. This piece uh, is entirely uh, reduced with a little bit of a gloss uh, glaze around that opening. So uh, you can see some incised line and then heavy, heavy um, uh, reduction where the carbon uh, from the reduction is absorbed into the clay. There's going to be a number of images I want to show you where the playfulness is uh, a mixture of things. There's definitely a black uh, glaze on here. Uh, you can see the surface is tight. It's kind of glossy, uh, these black areas. And then you have um, uh, some incised lines. You have a lot of uh, kind of draft-like lines or, or drawing, sketching lines where uh, some pencils have been drawn through uh, the glaze itself, and then some bare patches that have turned a kind of black gray uh, when it was smoked in the Raku kiln. Here, uh, this grid is made by incised lines that has then been rubbed with um, a black uh, underglaze. And then what you start to see here, as you saw in some earlier pieces, is the significance of uh, highlighting just a little bit with a color saturate. So you have black and white, and then this red material. And here um, is um, a, both an engaging kind of composition in form. You have this, uh, this vertical rectangle, and then this more horizontal form is perched on top. And um, every you can see this artist really takes advantage of kind of the wide open space and then a dark blue, um, almost rectangle coming down from the top and a floating sort of pinkish form. So all of these things uh, are creating um, some really interesting, uh, I think compositionally, it keeps it keeps me interested. I, I like this kind of abstraction. And we're gonna look at a lot of abstract forms. Here's one where you can see um, the, the white black is augmented with a rich kind of gold orange. And that is also a possibility that we can play with. Here, some more colors. It's more of an engaging color, not only variation in color, but you also have variation in texture. The, the black is quite glossy, and these different uh, colors have different levels of gloss, and we can experiment with that too. You see a very sat color saturated green and just little details of some uh, deeper medium blue, and then there's a kind of pale white blue 
and some yellows and, and some uh, lighter greens. Um, so, you know, creating, and then this kind of the, the proportions and the composition of these almost rectangles throughout the piece, really quite exciting. And then let's kind of think about, well, what if we do uh, some figurative sculpture in Raku and how can we, um, how can we find this perfect meeting of the, the clay form and the, the fired surface? And these are some examples, I think, of that. Um, here's some uh, abstract sculptures that do the same thing. Again, a combination of black and white of heavy reduction. Um, and uh, the piece on the right is a special technique that white with black lines is called naked raku, and we'll talk about that. Now we've, we've actually totally fallen off the edge here with some paintings. And what I'm going to tell you about this is I really want to encourage you to go out online, find uh, paintings, uh, abstract paintings, uh, realistic paintings, if you want, things that you're really interested in, because I think in that we find really great ideas for what we might want to do on our Raku forms. We could very well create forms um, with these kinds of images on them. And I love these kind of haunting figurative silhouettes. Uh, that are very painterly. And then there's many, many of those uh, that are just the human head and can be quite provocative as well. And uh, so these are all provided. They're not, they're paint, they're canvas, put them in the Raku kiln and they burn up completely. What I'm showing you is some things that interest me and could become inspirations for um, Raku pieces. Here is um, a uh, a really interesting combination of glazes and marks. Uh, actually, it's not, it's paint, but you could see doing this in, in some kind of glazing. And again, mostly black, white, perhaps gray, and then some saturated color. The red is a common uh, usage. And then there's that beautiful russet kind of lines on the right there. So lots of things, also a lot of things that we'll see repeated here in these paintings is not only these kind of varied um, uh, zone spaces of color, like this blue has so many different uh, levels of saturation and shadings and, and things that make it really interesting, but um, you'll also see some scratch through work with, uh, with pencil and some draft like lines, some scratches and lines and markings that, are, that add contrast and interest to the piece. These are, I'm gonna show you a couple of pieces by Richard Diebenkorn, which are, who's my favorite painter, I think one of my favorite painters of all time. And um, these are really intriguing uh, compositionally and, uh, with, and, and by, by color as well. And uh, so this is, is I think, the, um, uh, it might be the Berkeley series, um, or it could be the Ocean Park series. I think it's the Berkeley series, but I'm not sure. And here's another one. So they're loosely based on sort of landscape observations that he makes, but in reality, they're just really compelling abstract compositions. And you may not want to do abstract. You may have something else in mind altogether, which is fine. Um, but what I'm saying by this presentation, where I'm showing you paintings of all things, is that um, I want this semester to encourage us all to approach our Raku pieces with a tremendous interest in design, a tremendous interest in, in composing uh, abstract or realistic, um, some really wonderful painterly surfaces. So again, these are abstractions. Um, you can see some really nice proportions with about a quarter of the of the um, of the bottom of the piece being in black to blue. Um, lots of uh, uh, drawing lines on the surface of the piece, and a patch of red. Some numbers, a little bit of a, a screen. A lot of things going on in this in this image. And I just threw in a drawing here. I like this for a number of reasons. Um, the positive and negative space is very dramatic. Um, and the use of uh, language is something that is fun to play with as well. Not easy to do, but really fun to play with. Here's another compelling suggestion of a haunting figure.
And so much can be done with black and white and gray. Here's a couple, couple of uh, Raku sculptures which you can think about. These are abstract forms. And uh, this seems to be a final, uh, a good final wrap up here again. The, the invitation with this introduction is to explore the, the surface possibilities of Raku because we can fire so quickly. The, a, the first firing of the day will take about an hour and a half. The next one will take about an hour. We can get sometimes three or four firings in a class session, especially when you all learn how to do it yourselves. And so you're really going to be able to learn quickly about how things work and what happens. This piece, very sculptural. You can see, again, a lot of black and white contrast. The black is done by the carbon trapping, the absorbing of the carbon by the bare clay. The black is all bare clay. And the white is something like a spotted on um, Really beautiful uh, work. And this artist uh, is is uh, making his version of a T-bowl, which you'll learn more about in class. So that is the end of the, of the images I want to show you, just to get some thoughts going. And I hope you all get a chance to see this within the first week of class and um, that you start you can you can start making sketches and drawings and little paintings in preparation for how you want to ornament, decorate your pieces in Raku.